The Ancient Egyptians by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Key vocabulary. Environmental factors. The water, topography, and vegetation of an area. The water is, of course, its water source. In Egypt, that was the Nile River. Topography has to do with the physical features of the area. Is there a mountain, a desert, a river valley, etc.? And vegetation. What's growing there? Delta. An area of sediment deposited at the mouth of a river. Sediment could mean rocks, sand, soil, whatever. The delta is at the end of the river. Cataract, a large waterfall. Please make a note that there are six cataracts in Egypt. Fertilization. The process of adding fertilizer or plant food to the soil. The Egyptians were among the first to do this and this allowed them to have a very successful agricultural system. Papyrus. A tough water plant used to make paper, well a form of it, and rope in ancient times. However, papyrus is only effective as a material in dry climates. It breaks down in wet climates. That's why it would never be effective where we live. Pharaohs the Egyptian leaders, thought to be the morning and the evening star. In short, they were everything. They were the sun, they were the stars, the moon. They were the divine rulers, thought to be the descendants of the king, of gods. Pyramids. A huge, or huge, triangular-shaped monument of, a, of ancient Egypt built around a tomb that housed the pharaoh. It was always west of the Nile. Why do you think that? Please take a moment and put, your, put down a guess. If you said it's because the West is, was thought by the Egyptians to be the land of the dead, you're correct. They also would use the phrase, a person headed West, which means they died. They thought life and land were the same thing, that the day would start in the East with living and end and die in the West. Artisan a craftsperson, or somebody that's really good with their hands. Peasant, a person who does farm work for wealthy landowners. Vizier, a high-ranking government official. You probably recognize the name Vizier from Aladdin. The bad guy, Jabbar, Jafar, excuse me, was the high vizier, the royal vizier. Alliance, an agreement between nations to work together for common interests. One nation that the Egyptians had an alliance with, at least from time to time, was Cush. Make a note of that. K-U-S-H. But we'll talk more about them next week. 
hieroglyphics. Please make sure that you spell it H-I-E-R. A system of writing developed of, of writing development in about 3000 BCE. It's most likely influenced from cuneiform, which started, of course, as pictographs. Shadif, either with a UF or OOF. It's a type of irrigation tool used to bring water to the dry crops. Famine, a severe food shortage. Embalming or mummification. It is the mummification process where bodies were preserved to prevent decay. Please take a moment and highlight all of your new vocab words. And please pause at this time if you need to finish writing in any words. If not, let's continue. Here's an example of a shadif. And here is an example of an oasis. No, it's not a mirage. An oasis was an area that had trees in the desert and a fresh water source. There are several of them throughout the Sahara, but they're getting smaller and smaller every day. Geography. Geography talks about the ideal place for an environment to grow with all of its environmental features. For Egypt, it had the Nile River for a water source. Topography, it, had a it was in a river valley. And, of course, it had the Sahara, which provided protection. Remember, it's incorrect to say Sahara Desert because Sahara means desert. Vegetation would include papyrus along with many things that they grew in an ag a very sophisticated agricultural system. No Egypt without the Nile River. Egypt is a gift of the Nile, Herodotus said. He was a, a Greek historian who explored Egypt in about 400 BCE, but he never found the source. Doesn't seem over, overly credible, though, does he? Doesn't find the source, yet is making comments about something? The Nile River itself stretches over 4,000 miles. For those scoring at home, that's almost the length of the United States. It's the largest river in the world. And it flows south to north. South to north. And I'll show you that just in a bit. The Nile is the combination of the Blue Nile and the White Nile. The Blue Nile has a very rough current. And that's where all the cataracts are. The white is much gentler. There are six cataracts, large waterfalls. The first and the second one are located in Lower Egypt, which is in the north. Lower Egypt again is in the north. That's where like the delta is and it's at the end of the Nile River. The second cataract is the border between Lower and Upper Egypt and it is the one that form that begins where it's where right nearby it splits into the Blue and the White Nile. Please make a note that the second cataract or the first cataract excuse me first cataract is located at Aswan, Egypt. A-S-W-A-N. 
Aswan. The land was called Kimet, or the Black Land. It was because of the dark soil left from the floods, and it was very fertile. This is the land that is closest to the Nile River. The Red Land, or the Vast Sahara. Remember, it means desert. Now, the desert was very helpful. It provided very nice protection from foreign attack. Happy was the god of the Nile River. Got to keep happy happy, don't you think? Critical thinking question time. Egypt is a gift to the Nile. What do you think Herodotus was trying to say? Please take a moment and fill this question in. Two sentences should be enough. If you want to keep writing, please pause the video. And let's figure out what we... And if not, we're going to keep going. Here's what you need to highlight. Egypt is a gift to the Nile. 4,000 miles. Flow south to north. Blue and white. One and two, lower Egypt. 2 and 6 upper, Kemet, protection, desert, and highlight happy. The end.